You know you're going to get yourself killed one day. Yeah, I know. It's a possibility. I'm a nurse. Tortured to death. How do you like it? Well, I don't know. It's <laughs> funding's coming in. Yeah, Linda, this is Gary Thompson calling. Hi, how are you doing today? I'm always doing good. All right. Every well, day. So what the issue is, I've been talking to some of the politicians and I've been hearing in the news, there's a shortage of ventilators. Uh -huh. One of the reasons why is Toronto Public Health started teaching millions of people all the signs of respiratory emergency of patients in a coma, labored shallow breathing, um, cyanotic, chain stokes respiration, meiosis, deny rescue breathing and pound on a beaten heart. That's for their naloxone program. So people can't distinguish, even a nurse can't distinguish what's causing the respiratory emergency. So I'm showing up to scenes all the time, parents giving their children chest compressions, non-drug overdoses, and their children are alive. So your, your, your uh, ICUs are filling up with uh, people with brain damage. Oh, this is Gary Thompson calling. How are you? I'm doing great, always good. There's good, a, thank you. Yeah, there's an issue with the vent, a shortage of ventilators for the coronavirus. Okay. There's, there's a reason behind it, too. Because Toronto Public Health, with their naloxone program back in 2011, still going on in different health districts, are teaching laypersons all the signs of a respiratory emergency. Deny rescue breathing and give chest compressions to a beaten heart. Your ICUs are full of people with brain damage that shouldn't be there. Jeepers. Uh, you know what? Everyone is entitled to your opinion. Uh, like you're completely entitled to your opinion. Thank you for expressing your concern. But actually, uh, like those, I think those two things are not really connected. And harm reduction uh, helps. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Well, if, it's, if the person's hypoxic, you better give them some air ASAP. I just took a training at Ryerson. There was 100 people showed up February 6th at Ryerson, naloxone training. Okay. The PowerPoint was chest compressions, eh? But before the PowerPoint starts, they said, Gary's right, it's rescue breathing. <laughs> yeah. It's true. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, 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 I know. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, look at, I'm showing up to scenes, parents giving their children chest compressions, non-drug overdoses, because it's in the news and all the time. Heart and Stroke Foundation sent you guys a letter back in 2013 and said, stop doing that. John Tory and Barbara Yaffe had a press conference in January 2017 and said, rescue breathing. Anyway, well, you know, it's nonsense. It could happen to you. Put your injury or illness that put you comatose. There's people eagerly going to pound on your chest. I did a survey at Young and Bloor Street a few years back. I asked 100 people if you have a respiratory emergency, A, rescue breathing, or B, chest compressions, or C, I don't know. 90% of them said B and C, chest compressions, or don't know. I did this. I did the same survey in Vancouver at Robson and uh, Granville. That's the same kind of corner that you have here in Toronto. Ninety percent of them said rescue breathing, because BC has been teaching rescue breathing forever. So that's what happens when you confuse people. When a nurse tells them to do it, they do it. And, you know, eagerly. Well, you know, I'm trying to save some money. 
I'm trying to save some money. There's a bill in front of the legislature, Bill 105. My brother-in-law, an emergency physician, was there with Doris Grinspun and a guy named Rick Frain. And they were talking about people in ICU needlessly. Rick had to pull his brother off. I see you and uh, Doris Grinspun mentioned the Brad Chapman's coroner's inquest. Uh-huh. Yeah, and I was at the Brad Chapman coroner's inquest. There's Sean Court, the director of policy for the Ministry of Health, on the stand being questioned by the lawyers. His response uh-huh. was, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I want my lawyers. Go ask Eric Oskins. He's the one that makes us put the insert in the packages. The jury goes, that man's guilty. Everybody's making themselves sick. I I go to conferences with doctors, eh? It's like the Red Sea pardon. Don't talk to him. Don't look at him. He's the guy trying to save our lives. At one conference, John Tory's the keynote speaker. I'm there half an hour before it starts. John Tory walks in the room 15 minutes. All the doctors are shaking, don't want to talk to me, right? John Tory walks in the room, sits right beside me. He says, Gary, we're going to stop these people. Still going on. Because a five-year-old child knows it's wrong. Good. I remember my grade two and grade six. In grade six, we talked about respiratory arrest and cardiac arrest. Right. Yeah. In grade six, in grade two, I got my grade two school workbook. To hear my body's like a furnace. I remember the Chitter Dicks, my teacher's lesson from grade two. To hear my body's like a furnace. Without air, the fire dies. The human brain. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a good point of Yeah. <laughs> no. Anyway, I just got an email from public health there on Monday. Hope, hoping that the protocol is going to change <laughs> soon. <laughs> so, well, since 2011, it's, <laughs> it doesn't change soon. Anyway, I'm just having way too much fun and trying to save the taxpayer a lot of money and some lives. Right? Well, and I, I appreciate your call, but yeah. I, I can't really do much and provide any information regarding the topic for you. Like, I'm just here to answer the questions related. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, you don't want to have a shortage of any medical equipment, right? It's hard to do and practice preventative medicine when you're having to wait for people to wait for a ventilator. Somebody's got a bag, they'll mask them all day long or what? Jeevers. Anyway, I don't know. I'm just having way too much fun. What? Oh, is there any meetings coming up with the opioid, uh, what do you call that, the task force coming up soon? Like, they haven't sat for a long time. That I talked to that David Williams, the medical officer of health in the province years ago. Eh? He's like a strong, cold killer. He sits there, not a bat of the eye, not a drop of emotion. He's a medical doctor. <laughs> Again. Yeah, I know. Whatever, man. What's your name? I, it doesn't matter. But I'm just, you know, you know, I'm just trying to get this policy changed. That's all. Simple. You know, you think taxpayers paying for all this too? Well, why the heck the taxpayer ain't screaming? I don't know. You're hoping to get more later. No, well, no, we just it's what. Needlessly, people are on ventilators needlessly. You know that uh, Danforth shooting? 13 people got shot? Well, his brother was is left in permanent brain damage, neurologic impairment requiring 24-7. That's horrible. I know, and it shouldn't have happened. That's pro- I'm, I told public health back in 2011, somebody's going to kill their child be so distraught they're going to come in here with a gun and shoot your staff and the judge is going to let them go because the judge would say taught me how to kill my child I would have done the same damn thing God you got to think consequences right 
might be a little choked too. Well, there's been parents who've committed suicide if they found out they killed their own children. You know that, eh? Hmm. Yeah, that was uh, that for shooting was a very. Um, yeah, I know. I noticed that. You know that van attack up there on uh, on Young Street? Uh, yeah, yeah, live live at Young and Finch. The, the what you might call it the, the ceremony when they had the prime minister in there to the, the vice president of the Canadian Council of Churches gave a speech he said it's the new normal get used to it he said that twice I phoned him up the next day I says you can't tell the whole country something like that God. the new normal it's not normal. The guy had mental health issues, apparently. Wasn't dealt with. Wasting money. We need, but the, the, this policy is increasing. Uh, protocols is increasing mental health issues. Stress in the workplace. Nurses, EMS, paramedics showing up to calls all the time. People maltreated. Well, it's a no-brainer, man. When I took it, when I took the tra I was the twentieth person to take the training. I says, "Dirt has more brains. It'll take a week to stop this." Jesus, Chantel Marshall was the manager down there at the time, or the trainer, or whatever. She, you know, what was her position? She was the lead on. on it. She went to the legislature with seven hundred and a letter, seven hundred and forty-two medical people. And changed her mind. Just says, you know, had to sit down with Kathleen Wynn. She was a Chantel. And, and, she, and Chantel used to lie to, to me, lie to me and lie to me and lie to me. Yeah, I know. I'm just making some awareness. That's all. You know, I didn't need to take it. You, you know, you just have to figure it out. Have a great day. It's nice talking to you. Yeah, have a great day. Bye-bye. I'm sorry, I couldn't really answer any questions. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Policy. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Just keep you... Always, always. always. <laughs> upset. <laughs> Why isn't she upset? She should be fucking screaming her full fucking head off. <laughs>